On November 22, 2013, Federal District Court Judge Barbara Crabb of the District Court for the Western District of Wisconsin struck down the ministerial housing allowance as an unconstitutional preference for religion. The ruling was in response to a lawsuit brought by the Freedom From Religion Foundation and two of its officers challenging the constitutionality of the housing allowance and the parsonage exclusion. The federal government, which defended the housing allowance since it is a federal statute, asked the court to dismiss the lawsuit on the ground that the plaintiffs lack standing to pursue their claim in federal court. Standing is a constitutional requirement of any plaintiff in a federal case and generally means that a plaintiff must have suffered some direct injury as a result of a challenged law. The Wisconsin court concluded that the plaintiffs had standing on the ground that they would have been denied a housing allowance exclusion had they claimed one on their tax return. The government appealed this ruling to a federal appeals court, the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals in Chicago, and on November 13, 2014, the appeals court issued its ruling, reversing the Wisconsin court's decision. It concluded that the plaintiffs lacked standing to pursue their challenge to the housing allowance. The plaintiffs asserted that they had standing due to their injury of being denied a tax-free housing allowance should they claim one on their tax returns. But the appeals court refused to base standing on theoretical injury. It suggested that this deficiency could be overcome if the officers of the Freedom From Religion Foundation actually filed tax returns claiming a housing allowance if later rejected by the IRS in an audit. The bottom line is that the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that the plaintiffs would only have standing if they claimed a housing allowance on their tax returns that was later rejected by the IRS. Mere speculation or conjecture that this would happen is not enough evidence of direct injury to support standing. Well, obviously, it will be a relatively simple task for the officers to follow this recommendation. So while the ruling extends the validity of the housing allowance for now, the ultimate outcome likely will be the loss of the housing allowance exclusion for ministers. Let me mention five things to note about this ruling. First, it only applies to housing allowances and not the exclusion of the fair rental value of parsonages from taxable income. The reason for this is that the two officers of the Freedom From Religion Foundation did not live in foundation-owned homes, so they clearly lack standing to challenge the parsonage exclusion. Of course, one can assume that this will be corrected in the future and the attack on the parsonage exclusion resumed. Second, the appeals court's ruling means that the housing allowance remains valid for now. This means that churches should designate a housing allowance for their ministers for 2015 by the end of 2014, as in prior years. Churches that fail to designate a housing allowance for 2015 by the end of 2014 may designate one early in 2015, but remember that the allowance will only operate prospectively. It also means that the housing allowance exclusion is available to ministers in computing taxes for 2014. Third, the plaintiffs have announced that they intend to continue their legal challenge to the housing allowance. They will have their work cut out for them. To overcome the standing problem, they will need to claim a housing allowance on their tax return and then be audited by the IRS and have the allowance denied. They face two challenges. First, housing allowances cannot be designated retroactively, so it will not be possible for the two officers to file amended tax returns for prior years or claim a housing allowance for 2014. The Freedom From Religion Foundation will need to designate a housing allowance by the end of 2014 for 2015, and then when filing their 2015 tax returns that are due in April of 2016, they can claim a housing allowance exclusion. The IRS would then need to select one of these returns for audit. The audit rate is currently about 1%, so it may take years for the IRS to select one of these returns for examination, if ever. Even if these hurdles are overcome and the officers meet the standing requirement, this simply, simply gets them back in federal court. The Seventh Circuit did not address the constitutionality of the housing allowance in its ruling. It simply said the plaintiffs lack standing to challenge the constitutionality of the allowance. The appeals court may rule that the housing allowance is constitutional, or it may decide that it is not. Either way, the ruling likely will be appealed to the United States Supreme Court, which will take even more time. Clearly, these steps will take a considerable amount of time, and pursuant to Judge Crabb's own order, her ruling will take effect at the conclusion 
of any appeals or the expiration of the deadline for filing an appeal, whichever is later. Should the Freedom From Religion Foundation and its two officers ultimately prevail in their quest to strike down the housing allowance as an unconstitutional preference for religion, what would be the impact? Well, a ruling by the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals would apply to ministers in that circuit, which includes the states of Illinois, Indiana, and Wisconsin. It would become a national precedent binding on ministers in all states if affirmed by the United States Supreme Court, an unlikely outcome because the Supreme Court accepts less than 1% of all appeals. Note, however, that the IRS would have the discretion to follow or not follow such a ruling in other circuits and might be inclined to follow it to promote consistency in tax administration. In conclusion, ministers and churches should be aware that the housing allowance remains under attack and one day may be invalidated. Should that occur, there are two actions that will need to be implemented quickly. First, ministers will experience an immediate increase in income taxes. As a result, they should be prepared to increase their quarterly estimated tax payments to reflect the increase in income taxes in order to avoid an underpayment penalty. Note that there will be no effect on self-employment taxes for which the housing allowance is not tax exempt. And second, many churches will want to increase ministers' compensation to offset the financial impact. Such an increase could be phased out over a period of years to minimize the impact on the church. I will be monitoring all future developments and will keep you posted as they occur.